So it's been a while since I made my last video on how to use the GNOME desktop environment, and I thought it'd be worth it to revisit this, um, see what's changed in 2025, and just provide a, an orientation for potential newcomers who might be a little bit confused by the desktop environment and maybe how to approach this um, conceptually so that it makes a little bit more sense, I think, from the developer's perspective and um, how to make sense of the use case. So when you first boot GNOME, this is what you're going to be greeted with. This is called the Activities Overview. Um, this shows you at a glance your pinned icons, an app drawer, your virtual desktops, a search bar, and when there are applications open, they will explode so that you can see all of the applications here. It's worth mentioning at this point that this default overview is a little bit different in concept than what we're used to on Windows or Mac OS, uh, or even the other desktop environments on Linux like Mint or KDE Plasma or Budgie. We're used to seeing a desktop with some sort of um, launcher either at the bottom or at the top. Most of the time it's at the bottom. On Mac OS that might be your dock. On Windows that's your start menu. Um, but that's what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing our desktop and then we just open stuff and it appears on our desktop and we start working. Um, this paradigm is a little bit different because this is the central hub on GNOME. This is where you launch your um, activities from. This is where you see your open and um, open processes and open um, programs. This is different in concept because we don't have an ever-present dock on default GNOME. And the reason for that, let's just go ahead and open up a program here. We'll open up my files. The reason for this is if you look at your uh, any any program on GNOME, by default it doesn't have a minimize or a maximize button. The program exists for its own sake and GNOME assumes, much like a mobile operating device, that when you're done with the application you will just close it. If you're not done with the application there's no need to hide it away. Right? You're either using it or you're not there's no reason to keep something um, occupying your visual real estate like a dock or a start menu just to hide unused programs. This, I think, is the central criticism of GNOME, is it, quote unquote, forces the user into a workflow that GNOME thinks is valuable, not necessarily what the user thinks is valuable. Now, there are good arguments to be made for a maximize and minimize button, and I think there are good arguments to be made um, for excluding those things. But I think um, just understanding that we only use the programs that we're currently working on. So let's say you know, I got Muse score open here and I'm working on transcribing Iris. So while I'm working here, why do I need my file manager open? If I open my file manager, and I, you know, get into other sheet music or some sort of reference or whatever, open that up. Uh, when I'm done with it, there's no point to minimize it. I'm just going to close it. And now I'm back to working. If I need it present at all times, then I'll just come over here to a new workspace. And I'll just leave it there. This is where it belongs. Right. And then I'll just go back over here to my current workspace. So I think just understanding the concept of GNOME, that each workspace is its own unique set of tasks, uh, that's going to be, I think, the most valuable concept shift for new users. Now I'm going to close some of this stuff out, and I'm going to talk a little bit, oh, there's OBS, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what to expect when you first boot it, if you're new to the desktop environment. Again, you'll see this. Let's go ahead uh, and just start at the top left and go through all of the information. You have your activities overview button right here. This also shows you your workspaces. So if I go over a workspace, you'll see it. Uh, you can also click on this to access your overview. By default, you have a hot corner here. So if you swing your mouse up, it'll do the same thing. Activities overview. 
Here you have date and time, calendar, weather, these sorts of things. Um, really straight ahead, you can change the formatting of the clock and settings. This is the default formatting. And over here you have what is GNOME's version of a system tray. Uh, so typical uh, things you need to quick access, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, your, your power that you're using, volume controls, mic controls, power off, setting, lock, all of the stuff that you'd expect in this typical like start menu or app launcher is kind of folded here into the system tray. This isn't technically a system tray. GNOME doesn't provide access to applets to, to populate like it would on Windows or on KDE Plasma or even on Mac OS. Um, but through extensions, you can add other quick launch things here that will make their way into the app tray. Coming back to overview, we have our search. Search will search for files, but I use it most often to launch applications. So if I need to get VLC open, I type VLC, hit enter, and it pops up. Um, or if I need to open up maps, type in maps, same thing, open it up. It takes a second, I'll deny access but Maps opens up. Here uh, is an overview of our active desktops. I think you need three to see it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put some programs up so it stops disappearing. This one over here, and we'll put this one here. Cool. So we have an overview of our active desktops here. Um, like you just saw, you can drag and drop applications to your various desktops to open them. And once they're open, you can also drag them to the desktops that you might need. Now, I think the selling point, the my favorite feature about GNOME is that these desktops are dynamic. They create automatically as you need them. So you've probably seen that I started with two or three. And as I add programs, it gives me another blank desktop on the far left or on the far right over here. That's fantastic. Um, this is really why GNOME exists, I think, is for the dynamic workspaces. So as you're working, if you need to compartmentalize different tasks, say over here I'm transcribing music, I'm doing administrative work, I'm recording my desktop, I'm opening files, I've got my terminal running. These are all different tasks that don't interrelate with one another. And so GNOME assumes that they don't all need to be on one screen, like you might be used to with Windows, with a bunch of things minimized. And like, oh wait, yeah, let me maximize my file manager, or let me maximize my terminal, um, while I have my Muse score up, while I'm working on a score, or while I'm working on emails. And it doesn't make sense to, to keep all of those things. From the GNOME, GNOME perspective, it doesn't make sense to keep all of those things on the same screen. So that's the dynamic workspace overview. Coming back to there, we finally have our dock. You can pin applications down here. This functions mostly identically to the um, Mac OS dock, except that it's always hidden behind the um, main portion of the screen, the desktop here. Uh, you can access this a couple of different ways. Like I said, you can come click on the activities overview. You can use the hot corner. My preferred method is to press the super key or the meta key or the windows key. These are all the same button and that'll open that up. I think for ease of use and, and for quick access, just hitting the windows key is usually the, the easiest thing for me. And then we have the application drawer, uh, which will explode everything into an application grid similar to, I, I think Mac OS has a feature. I don't know what it's called. Um, but that's where you see the rest of your applications that you don't have pinned to the taskbar. So that's the GNOME desktop environment in a nutshell. Um, I hope that helped kind of make sense of the workflow. I do want to take us into maybe some extensions that might provide um, a vanilla. I, I prefer the vanilla experience, but I do use some um, extensions to, I think, not change fundamentally how GNOME works, but to work, I think, better than intended. So there's three that I use on a daily basis. There's caffeine. So I've got caffeine installed here. When I turn on caffeine, that gives me uh, a little pill over here that I can click on to kill the, um, the, the screen suspend or the sleep of my computer. 
And so I'll, I'll leave this on. Uh, you know, I, I teach, so I have agendas usually up on the board that's connected to my computer. I'll turn on caffeine so that it doesn't just suspend my computer while I'm uh, working on a lesson or something. I use caffeine a lot. Something I wish it was included by default. It's not, but I prefer it. It's one of the most valuable extensions I've ever come across. Another extension that I use on a daily basis is Hot Edge. And so let me back us up for a second. We talked about the hot corner over here coming and launching us into activities overview. I think this particular upper left hot corner is a vestige from GNOME 3 uh, when everything was lined up over here on the left and the workspaces ran vertically instead of horizontally. Now that we've gone back into a vertical orientation, it doesn't make sense in my brain to have a hot corner up here triggering something that I need to travel my mouse all the way down here to access. Made more sense when the dash was over here. Uh, so to fix that problem, I installed Hot Edge, which now moves the bottom to the hot corner. So you come over here, it triggers Activity Overview, and your mouse is already overlaid with the uh, applications that you're probably going to want to watch uh, launch. <clears throat> The last one I use on a daily basis is the alphabetical app grid. Uh, by default, the application grid uh, just populates, I think, in the order that you install the programs, and then you can move things around. Uh, I prefer the app alphabetical app grid because it's how I just like to organize uh, my phone and my applications. And so it does it automatically for me. It just saves me a couple of extra minutes, and it just makes sense in my brain. You can obviously take that one or leave it. Uh, if you prefer to organize your app drawer to your own liking. Now I have other extensions here installed that I use on a less regular basis. Uh, I use GS Connect here to link up my phone. Uh, this is a GNOME implementation of KDE Connect and it basically just lets your phone talk to your computer in real time, gives you notifications for like text messages and important calendar information coming from your phone and vice versa. Also lets you send, send commands and send files. Um, really convenient extension. And I use Tailscale to access my home network, uh, my server at home. Now there are some application, or I'm sorry, there are some extensions that are extremely popular that I would like to talk about that I don't use. Number one probably being Dash to Dock. So Dash to Dock, it does exactly what it says. It takes the Dash and it turns it into a dock. People swear by this. I used to use Dash to Dock pretty regularly, um, but I don't really see the value in it now. I'm still just moving my mouse down here to access my programs, and so it just made more sense to me to just do that with Hot Edge and allow GNOME to function how GNOME is intended to function. So that's Dash to Dock. And turn that off. Another one people really like is Blur My Shell. So what Blur My Shell does is it adds Blur elements to the GNOME shell, exactly like it says. You can see here now that I have some transparency and some blur in my top bar. And when I access my overview, it has transparency and blur on my dash. And instead of this gray background, um, it has this blurred background. This is a completely uh, aesthetic extension. And I understand, again, it looks modern, it looks sleek. I do like the blur effects. When I use KDE Plasma, I make great use of the blur effects. Um, but it's something that I've kind of learned to live without because it wasn't worth this. I'm, I'm not sure if this is fixed, but last time I really used Dash to Dock, I'm sorry, last time I really used Blur My Shell, there was no way to make this dynamic and turn black when an application went full screen. And this just looks really odd to me to have this blurred transparent top bar with a full screen app um, contrasted so closely next to it. And so I just stopped using it because I prefer this look much more. So that's Blur My Shell. Um, I think that's all for the applications or the extensions that I use. Oh, Arc Menu. So Arc Menu is actually a really cool uh, extension. I'm not going to take you through it all, but it does allow you to change the look and feel of 
your uh, activities overview or your turns activities overview into a traditional launcher. There's a ton of customization here. This is a really feature rich extension. I like it a lot. Um, but again, I've trained myself to just use the g default GNOME experience or default GNOME workflow. And so this is uh, something I don't make much use of anymore. But for those of you guys looking for a more traditional launcher, this is where you're going to go to get that is the arc menu. And then the last one I actually do use now, um, which I didn't use to use, let me turn off arc menu, is the Bing wallpaper, which just downloads the wallpaper of the day from bing.com and makes it your background. I like this. I'm not a huge fan of all the default GNOME backgrounds. Uh, and so just getting one randomly every day is nice. I don't know. Bing has good wallpapers, so I like that extension. Anyway, I hope that helped you guys um, provide a little bit of more context for how GNOME works, how to navigate the, the default experience, and maybe some extensions to help you along the way. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.